And now our exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. We sat down with him at the presidential office in Kyiv, which many are now calling the presidential fortress. Watch. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov compared you to Hitler. Russia now says that Israel supports the neo-Nazi regime here in Kyiv, referring to you. Your reaction? We are used to these kind of hits and the reaction, I think, is still weak in the world to these phrases of Lavrov. I think the reactions must be more powerful. The reaction must be lightning-like. Leaders of the world, each year, in the time of, you know, of this anniversaries or special days of Holocaust, etc., and they all always say that never again we have to, you know, we have to fight. It's about diplomacy. It's about, you know, something very official. Don't wait. That is my message. Don't wait official dates. When we talk about anti-Semitism, I have not heard from any sort of Jewish communities or societies on the territory of Russia. Some have suggested Western intelligence that Putin may officially declare war. What do you think? will happen on May 9th, and if it's a declaration of war, what would that change for you? For us, this is not going to change anything. For us, war is going on for eight years now. The full-fledged war is going on for seven days, and whatever Putin is going to say, the possibility is still there. They want to show what kind of czars they are. They ruined the entire city that would be like in a bad Hollywood movie. Is that the victory they are striving for? For the civilized world, this is defeat. The May 9th is going to be remembered around the world as a tragedy, as a bloody day, and certainly not the, not the day to forget. Weapons. Do you have what you need? Do you need more? And what do you need? We have key weapons without which we could not deoccupy the cities like Mariupol. We have a big issue. Russia blocked all the trade routes and we cannot export our wheat. They occupied our ports and they are taking out our goods. I don't want to say this now. I don't want to name specific countries who behind our backs are making deals to buy our grain from Russia that was stolen from Ukraine. Can you tell me who is trying to buy this? Not now, but we, but we have the names of these uh, countries. But if, if they will do it, of course we'll tell. How important is it that President Biden come to Kyiv to see Bucha or Dyanka? What has happened here? It's important. I think it's very important. Because, uh, you, you know, in, in our minds, in our society, the President Biden, the president of, uh, of the biggest democratic civilization for Ukrainians, for our understanding, yeah, that's it, that our partners, strategic partners. And I think that it, it would be a great signal, very important signal. Johnson came, I'm just thinking that it's also very good for him that is good for him because United States supports us. So I mean, I mean that the president of, of the country which supports us, I think um, is, is good for, for him to be here. If, if it's possible, I don't know. Well, Speaker Pelosi came. So. Yes, so it's possible. Tell me how this ends. Only with victory. We have no way out. Mr. President, thank you for your time. Thank you.